we are the we are the mental health wellness and safety team and i am asia clement and i would like to introduce our vp karen masola karen welcome everyone thank you for coming i'm um, looking forward to the presentation and she would like to introduce Yes, I would like to introduce our none other than our president of Florida PTA, <laughs> Carolyn Nelson Goder. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> Thank you, Karen and Asia, and to all of the committee members who had a hand in crafting today's workshop for us. Um, Talking about mental health is pretty important, especially nowadays where there are so many stressing factors um, that are playing on our lives. Uh, I'm glad the committee saw fit to bring this information to us. Uh, and I have no doubt that uh, we'll leave here better off and better prepared to deal with the things that are causing us stress in our lives. Um, I'd like to take a moment to introduce the members of the executive committee and the board of directors who are here. You've already met Karen Mazzola, who is our Vice President for Educational Development. Um, I think she is the only EC member who is with us. From the Board of Directors, uh, we have, of course, the committee chair for this committee, Asia Claremont, who you've met. We have Felita Tut, who is the chair of our Education Committee. Do you want to say hi, Felita? Good afternoon. Thank you. We have Melanie Gamble, chair, excuse me, not chair, president of Escambia County Council. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we have Alvin Ganey, who fills two roles. He is both our leadership development chair and chair of our centennial celebration. I have two Alvins on here, so hopefully one of them will say hello. <laughs> All righty, he's probably not in a position to do so right now. And we also have from our staff, uh, Kimberly Adamski, our compliance guru. Hi, everyone. And Robin DeMar, our office manager. Good afternoon, everyone. Alvin's clapping to let us know he's actually here, but can't talk right now. The rest of the committee members will be introduced by Asia. Back to you, Asia. Uh, thank you, Carolyn. And I would like to introduce our um, vice chair, co-chair, um, Chelly Pedraza. Chelly. Good morning, everyone. And I would like to introduce also Maria Calver, which is one of our members of our committee. Maria? Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, and thank you uh, for being part of our committee. We really think, welcome you again, and thank you for being taking the time to listen to what we want to share. This webinar is aimed to discuss the safety issues that impact our children and provide, and we trying to provide necessary tools to make sure that we have what we have in our safety toolbox. And uh, we will provide information, we'll provide resources, and we'll provide tips in creating family safety uh, plans, as well as creating a, giving you some resources at the end for doing program. Um, and I want to just reiterate the uh, PTA's mission, which is to make every child's a potential reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate for all children. And that's what we're trying to do today um, to make that mission a reality. Um, first, we, I want you guys to keep in mind that we are not the subject matter expert. We are only providing resources since this is out of our scope of practice. Uh, we are a committee that our main sole purpose is to be reporters, get information and provide it to you. Again, we're not licensed and we have to put that disclosure up in front since we're gonna be um, discussing things regard to mental health and wellness. Um, 
I would like to say, what is our role as a parent and the purpose of this workshop? I already stated the purpose of the workshop. And our roles as a parent is that we as parents, we want to educate, we want to influence, we want to inspire, and we want to give our children safety. And so throughout the whole presentation, please keep in mind that that's our role as parent, educate, influence, motivate, and also to we besides providing for them, we have to keep them safe. And that's what um, the not for this uh, workshop. Um, we're gonna start with a question. What is safety? When you hear the word safety, what first comes to mind? And um, normally safety is something that we try and just to as the word said, to keep safe, but it's a process that we take um, to prepare ourselves for any unforeseen and uncontrollable event, whether it be a natural event, whether it will be a shooting out, whether it be whatever that might be that put our family in danger. So that's what is safety. We look at to make sure that everybody is healthy and is well being. What is a family safety plan? in what is a component of family safety plan is just a plan that take the the skeleton the practice of what the safety guidelines are so it's a plan that you develop with your family to make sure that you the family is safety in all times we might not be able to that doesn't mean that it's going to prevent for something bad to happen but at least we'll prepare our family members to be in the face of an emergency to have their head levels and know how to do it and what is the benefit of the safety plans? The benefit is to empower, to educate, and to prepare our children so that way they have that peace of calm when is in regards to when they face in any adversity. Um, we are gonna talk about the impact of gun violence in our children and adolescents and how that can impact um, their mental health well-being. And we're gonna share also some graphics and statistics that we have found along the way. Again, what is safety, I did answer that. And what is the family safety plan? We went over a little bit about that and the importance of it. And the benefit, again, is just to make sure that our children have the necessary tools to be safety in any time of adversity. So I'm just going to define what is safety based on the um, safetopedia. I didn't know that existed, but I found it out. And it was like, they said, safety is a concept that includes all measures and practice taken to preserve the life, health, and bodily integrity of individuals. It will add more elements to the wellness of the individuals that compasses their mind, mood, and emotions. I will say that um, in my, when I was reading that, I said they missed in a piece that is that the wellness piece of it, because we not only want to be safety and adverse in the time of adversity, but we want to be saved in our mental health and our stability, how our mood, our emotions, the relationship that we engage with other people, any type, whether that be in school, whether that be at work, whether that be with peers, whether that be in any, any aspect, in any environment, as well as our physical um, body, how can we keep our physical body um, healthy in, in, with tangibles in our lives, like it, um, our making sure that we go to the PCP, making sure that we are checking everything, that we have the annual checkup, all that is part of wellness and safety because it's a preventive measure. Um, what is the family safety plan? As I mentioned, it's the process to what? To make sure that we, the family knows exactly what they need to do in any time of adversity. And what are the components over it is very, very important that when you do your safety plan, that you go over, assess your family, what is the specific needs of your, of your, of your household to be able to determine what kind of safety plans you're going to have for your family. And it's very important because it's going to keep the children uh, at ease because once you know, and that's why we do the drills in school, just to make sure that when the event happened, they are, they know what to do. And that's the, the goal for a safety plan to know what to do in any open environment outside the school setting. And it's our job as parents to do that. 
Um, we have, we want to keep in mind that when we are developing our safety plan, we include the children and any other adult in the household. Why? Because we want to make it interactive. We want to make it fun. We want to make it educational. We want to, we want to make them that they count because if they buy in into the process, then they're more likely to follow it. They're not going to feel something that you just put it on them. It's another task and it's a tedious and all that. I like this cartoon and I want you guys to look at it. Um, this woman, the guy comes home all beat up. And then she said, guess what? You forgot to take with you this, you forgot to take with you this morning the very things that will protect him not to have a head injury. So I was cracking up when I saw it because we do that. We tend to put measures after the fact. We close our house when we get robbed. And the purpose of today is to create the consciousness that we need to be proactive and we have to do that with our children and mirror what we get in at school. It's also important to create a safe word, uh, a code word with the kids um, to let for them to know that to let you that for them to let you know that they are in danger. Uh, for example, um, we can just the princess is in Disneyland or oh, I want to go to Disneyland or whatever is a code word that you know it, that is uh, that your child is in danger um, and they will be creative. They can create their own word with you and that's what makes the fun part of it. I remember when Dominique was um, a little, I mean, we had a code word and it was that I'm your princess. And I knew that at that moment in time when she said, mommy, I'm your princess, right? So I knew that she was in danger. And it's important to let your children make up the word because that way they will buy into it. What are the components of the safety plan? You create an emergency contact list. It's important for them to know who they need to contact. I mean, a family member, a neighbor, a friend, and make sure that those people are nearby your household, that it's, it's easy for them to get into your house if something happened at home. Also have on at hand the local emergency numbers. Um, develop what uh, if they have any illness, what um, what they're allergic to, uh, what medication they're taking. So something that you have in there, so that way it's easy access. But when you're not home and something happened, the child's know where to get it. Then again, make sure that they memorize the code word and teach them what to do when they're home alone, when you're not there, what they need to do. When you're in public places, and if you have to separate, let's say that you're in a park and you would let them go and run up, away, you come out with a place, identify the place that you guys can all convene in a, in, a, in a case something happened. So, and when teach them that whatever it is with a natural disaster emergency, where where is that place that you guys are gonna meet? Um, it's good to have an evacuation plan for the household as well. We've been, um, it, this is the part that really kind of is dear to my heart. And last Wednesday, we had Kate, um, Taylor, that she went over the walk that they did in the school to protest with the gun violence. Um, from January to this date, now we have had already across the nation 146 mass shootings, more than what happened last year. Last year, we had 300 mass shootings. Imagine how that is. There are seven states that have permitless law, law in Florida is heading to that, um, in, is jumping into that, into that road as well to have that. So America is the, the number one that, um, that has increased the death in regards to firearm. And our students are tired, as Taylor said it last Wednesday. They want they want solutions. They don't want to go to school and being afraid. They don't want to have, and that affect their mental health because now they go with PTSD. Then they get depressed. If the, something happened to the friend, if they hear that it happened to another student, if it happened in the school that um, that they, are, they have friends over there or whatever happened in their concerns, they are affected by it directly or indirectly. And we have to be mind conscious of it. And as parents, it is our job to make sure that they have wellness and the mental health in check. Um, the video? Um, I do want to yeah. add, though, but 
before we watch this video, if anybody's sensitive to this kind of um, this nature of this video, which is about um, mass shootings, it was is not that um, it's not as graphic or anything like that. But even that can be a trigger just for anybody that's been involved. I do want to make sure that if this is going to be sensitive, it's only a three minute video, but I wanted everyone to be aware at an opportunity to turn down the sound, do whatever they need to, to protect themselves and their their own well-being. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maria. The volume, Shelly. With more than 640 incidents, according to the Gun Violence Archive, many are now looking back for warning signs from the shooters about their intent to commit future crimes and asking, could they have been stopped? For years, the FBI has been analyzing this phenomenon, which they call leakage. Leakage is anything that someone relays, whether consciously or unconsciously, that kind of indicates that they are having uh, troubles, they're troubled, they might want to commit a violent act against themselves or others, whether that's suicide or whether that's uh, something as extreme as a mass shooting. One data set shows that more than half of active shooters shared their intent to commit violence in some way. And as technology becomes more advanced, there are an increasing number of opportunities. Before the social media world and before more sophisticated internet connections that we have now, a lot of these interactions and a lot of this type of information wouldn't even be identifiable. It wouldn't have been recorded. So the great benefit that we have is that, yes, stories are telling us, hey, look back at all these things that are signs that might have been missed. The gunman in Buffalo was previously taken into custody for psychiatric evaluation after making statements in school about wanting to commit violence, but was released. In the Buffalo case, I think one of the things that stood out to me is that there was a mental health evaluation, a psychiatric evaluation, based on the fact that he had made statements, law enforcement interceded. In Uvalde, Texas, authorities identified multiple occasions where the shooter had given clues about his plans. Though there were a slew of examples of things that might have in an aggregate seen, uh, shown a pattern of, of a concern the state report also identified that many of those were privately known. They were personally known. Family members knew them or friends knew them, but they, were, they weren't all put together. A judge in Colorado Springs warned that one man's situation would likely get worse if he didn't receive mental health treatment after he was arrested for an attempted kidnapping and bomb threats. I think uh, whether you look at a handful of situations that just occurred in the past year, uh, Colorado, Club Q is a good example the situation in Chesapeake, the situation up in Highland Park. You have parents who have some interaction with law enforcement because their family member is acting uh, violently. Last year, President Biden signed a new bill into law that aimed to prevent possibly dangerous people from accessing guns and boosting spending for mental health. But authorities still face many issues when tackling this problem. In those cases, friends and family members, uh, intimate partners and spouses, although they are the first to know whether or not uh, somebody is a higher concern, they're the least likely to respond and, and to report them. Of course, it's a protective measure, right? But if I said to you as a parent, um, 30 to 40% of these shooters uh, want to kill themselves as well as other people, and by reporting the concern about your child or your husband, you could save their life or the life of, of those around you. You might react differently. 2022 was the second highest year on record. For Maria? Okay. Um, Next slide. Yes, for the next slide. Um, I just want to mention that I'm also part of the Pinellas County Health and Medical Preparedness. Um, so I've had opportunities to listen to uh, the director of the FBI for Florida um, regarding um, the club incident in Orlando. And 
he was able to show us some live footage and everything else. So one of the things that they tell us not to do is not to just lay there and play dead. Um, because that's what happened um, for them. And even though the guy was changing out his cartridge, he was still able to, um, as people were playing dead, they could have charged him or at least try to get away or run to an exit somewhere. And they didn't do that. So there are things there that we have to be very aware of, of what can happen if we're not proactive and if we don't educate our children of where the exits are, um, where to go when we're in a store or in a movie theater. We've heard about all of these incidents happening everywhere. And, and with that particular gunman, his, tar his target was not false. His target was another club, but because they had armed, um, uniformed policemen outside that club, he was deterred to another club. So that whole concept of, oh, he went there because of X, Y, and Z wasn't actually true. He went there because it was convenient. And so um, what I'm trying to bring up there is that we don't know when these things are going to happen. And even if somebody is on a mission to do something, not always do they know where they're going to wind up being. So um, there's no way for us to really get to understand any of that. So um, also, I want to just say that Taylor Miller on the gun reform um, that was done on past Wednesday, last Wednesday, she, she starts talking around the 34 minute mark. So, and it goes for about six minutes there. And it's a really important thing to see how, if we engage our children, if we have them to start to protect themselves um, as well, to be engaged in protecting themselves, then it really truly makes a huge impact in our country. So, um, aspect also of this here um, of firearms and what that does for the rest of the country. So in those states, US states that have the least firearm law provisions, the firearm suicide rate was higher than say the ones that with the most firearm law provisions. So again, this here uh, aspect of this Firearm isn't about just active shooters, but also how much access um, our children have to firearms that are not um, that are available to them just at home or at a friend's house. And um, what are we doing to protect them? And well, um, and just so you know that we also have um, the VA is a good resource when it comes to mental health and PTSD. Um, they also have here in Pinellas County anyways, they, and I'm thinking it would be um, they have available gun locks. So you can, and they're free. So if you have somebody that's a military family member that has um, PTSD, that has weapons in the home, they get scary, some, they're scary sometimes, then you wanna have that um, resource to uh, just just tap into that so that they can get the help they need and also for those loved ones to get those gun locks for free. The U.S. is the only country among its peers in which guns are the leading cause of death among children and teens. That's among children and teens, the leading cause of death are guns. Um, if you see on this graph here provided, number one, of course, is the U.S. Um, and it's at 4,357. That's as of 2000. Um, so 4,357 children have died uh, because of guns whether it was from a mass shooting or from um, suicide or accidents. Um, that's, that's a huge impact. When you see number two, 
is, well, they don't show number two, but number, let's go to the next slide. Number six on in the world is that it's Switzerland. So, yeah, so that, that's a huge impact. Um, and of course, the Asian countries, you think about those countries that don't carry around guns. Um, it's not typical, even the prime minister of Japan that was that was killed by a gun. It was like the third time in the year that a gun was used, and that was a homemade gun. It was not something that they purchased. They had to make it themselves. So if you have to make it yourself, it's probably going to deter you from having to do anything with a gun. So um, we have to remember that, that these gun laws need to be modified so that we can protect everyone. I get it that people want to protect themselves. I get it. Um, I was in the military. I know that that's important. Um, but I think that that's also how you protect yourself as part of protecting how those guns are being distributed throughout the home or your county because, you know, we don't want any more of this. Unfortunately, it's, it's happening every year. Thank you, Maria. So we've kind of gone over the safety um, and some of the things that are currently happening, especially with our gun, our gun laws and situations. So next up, we're going to talk about programs. So what that's what PTA does, right? We create programs to make sure that we are helping our parents understand what, you know, what's going on and finding ways of supporting them to make sure that they that they are getting the support that they need, whether it's um, gun locks, which are, um, I think every single one of our counties has that, so that is extremely important. Um, but you wanna make sure that you're, you're providing information to your family. So very quickly, I'm gonna go through creating a program. There are tons of things that we can go through when we're discussing making a program, um, but I just wanna try to go through like the, the major things. So defining and creating a SMART program, uh, SMART program goals. So for example, SMART is specifics, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So if you look at that little picture, it kind of gives you an explanation of like what we mean by that. So specific, you want to state exactly what you want to accomplish, you know? So this is essentially like, okay, what, what are our goals exactly? What exactly are we trying to figure out? And then measurable. How will you demonstrate and evaluate the extent to which the goal has been met? So do you have a certain number of attendees that you are really trying to make sure that you get? So like if you usually have 10 attendees, you know, 10 families come to your events, you know, would you, what a measurable would be like, you know, we want to get at least 15 to come to our next event. Um, so that's something that you can do that with there. Uh, achievable. So you want to make sure that you're stretching and challenging, challenging yourself as a unit, but you wanna make sure that it's achievable, right? So if you typically get 15 families that come to an event and your goal is 250, is it achievable in that amount of time? You know, you wanna make sure that you're setting goals that are achievable, um, especially like when you have a lot of, you know, you PTA, we work really hard. So we want to make sure that when we set a goal, it is something that is achievable so that we continue to see the progress and we continue to work towards our goals. Uh, you don't want to put something that's not achievable and then people are sad or disappointed or whatever it is about the program. Relevant. So this is where you want to make sure that you are paying attention to your audience. And it is something that is relevant to what your families, your students, or your, or your teachers need. You want to make sure that it is relevant. So, you know, how does this goal tie into our key responsibilities? How does this goal tie into our mission? Right? So one of the first things that Asia did when she was presenting was present the PTA mission. Every single thing has to go back to our children. And what can we, how are we making sure that our children are, are getting everything that they need? So you want to make sure when you are creating a program, how is this going to benefit our children? Um, how does this tie into our goals as PTA? 
And, you know, how is it aligned to whatever objectives we may have for the year, right? Sometimes your object objectives may change a little bit depending on what's going on in your own community. And then time bound. Uh, you want to set one or more target dates. So if you are creating a program, you want to have a plan of work where it shows, okay, this is our target date for when we have the, when we send out flyers. This is our target date for when we do this. This is when we want to have the event, you know? So you want to make sure that you are paying attention to those times and you're organized about that. So one of the biggest things you can do as a PTA when you are trying to create a program or trying to figure out what you're going to do, it is review prior year programs to see what worked best. Sometimes we try something new and it's awesome. Sometimes we try something new and maybe it's not exactly what we should have done or maybe if we tweak it a little bit, it might be more engaging for families and stuff. So you wanna just look at past years, what they've done, survey the community. Our families will often tell us and our students, uh, they will tell us what they need if we ask them. You know, So make sure that you are surveying, you're asking them questions, what they feel they need. Uh, Prioritize that feedback. You know, like when you turn, when you get elected and you become a president uh, or you get on the board, in your mind, you have a certain set of, okay, this is my goal. But if you get in that position and you see, okay, our, our families are asking for this, or they, it sounds like they are, you know, needing this, then prioritize that community um, responses and adjust, you know, it doesn't mean ignore everything that you're planning, but try to marry the two and make sure that you're adjusting. Uh, network with other PTAs for possible collaboration. A lot of times middle and high schools or middle and elementaries can get together to provide programs together to support each other. So definitely reach out to your local areas, local area schools to try to work on stuff like that. Check program information from your council, state, and national PTA for resources. Florida PTA has tons of different things that they have on their websites. Um, they have the kit of materials. There's lots of good information in there. And same thing with national PTA. And if you have a question, uh, definitely reach out to your county councils. Creating a program. So you wanna just kind of go through. So when you're implementing a pro program, you look at community engagement. So it's really great to make sure that you're involving the families and the students and the educators in that preparation. Uh, ask them to volunteer, you know, make sure that you're, you're also checking to see what issues they may have that may prohibit them from attending an event. So if you're constantly getting a very low number of attendees, why? You know, what, what is going on? Could it be uh, transportation needs? Is it access? You know, do you need to find a different meeting place? So that is all stuff that you want to make sure. Make sure that whatever event you hold or whatever program you're doing, that it is in compliance with your PTA insurance. Uh, volunteers coordinate and de delegate volunteer recruitment to assist in running the program. So we can't do it all by ourselves. Uh, we are a team. We, we need other people to support and we need to make sure that we're working together. Presenters. It's always a great idea to find someone to do the presenting for you, especially if you are doing something that has to do with safety or wellness or something like that. Um, if you're doing mental health, you can have the guidance counselor uh, do a presentation or something like that so that it is somebody that has that's, that specializes in that subject and they're able to speak on it um, better than, you know, than than we would trying to come up with a whole thing. Uh, follow up, you wanna make sure that you confirm with any presenters or vendors or anything that you have going on. Uh, make sure that it's very clear that you communicate the time, the location, everything in email so that they can look at it and make sure that they have everything on track. Uh, publicity. This is one of those things that I think sometimes we fall short on and then we're like, oh my gosh, if only I had done this. You want to make sure that you are preparing. That goes back to that timeline. You want to make sure that you have that timeline down. So when you are sending information out or collecting information, that you are able to, you know, to get all that stuff done. So making sure that you're either sending home flyers in backpacks or email blasts or social networking sites, making sure that 
they, they, your families and your, your students know what's going on. Uh, they can't attend something that they don't know anything about. So you wanna make sure that you're giving all that information out. And my biggest thing, that's why it's in blue in the bottom, is review the materials. Oftentimes we create a flyer or we do something or a presentation or whatever the case is. And we we're just like, okay, we did it, we're good. And we don't have that second set of eyes. Always have somebody else look over whatever it is that you're putting out there. Because we look at something for so long that sometimes we're just, we're done. We, we don't even realize that we're putting words where they don't go and stuff like that. And, and little mistakes can, can slip through or maybe even big mistakes. You might put the wrong date on a flyer. So you just wanna make sure that you always have someone reviewing everything and that you're all on the same page. Sorry if I'm talking fast, but I'm trying to, you know, go through. Okay, presenting program. So you want to make sure that you arrive early and the checks this check the site. So if you need some type of audio visual or something like that, that you have everything set. Uh, allow extra time to test all the all the video stuff. Greet your presenter. Make sure that they realize how appreciative you are. Um, introduce the presenter, the topic after the presentation. Make sure that you thank them um, and send like a note or an email or something like that. Evaluating the program. And this is probably one of the things that we tend to not do as much as we should. Uh, you want to make sure that you do like an exit survey or something along those lines to see if what we were trying to convey was actually done. So for example, if you're talking about safety and you're trying to get people to, to wear bike helmets, you know, like having that exit survey, like was this information beneficial to you? Did this help you in some way? Did you learn something new? If yes, like what, what was the one thing that you learned today? That might help them, you know, get, give you an idea of like, okay, this is a great program and we should continue with this, or maybe we need to tweak it. Maybe we need to make sure that we have a translator on hand for uh, our families that are super, are diverse in our schools. So you want to make sure that you're looking at all those things. And one important thing, Shelly, I want to say is that when you're doing that exit um, survey, make sure that you also want to listen to them, ask them what else they want to see before in the, in the next program, because that's mm -hmm. going to help you to create a very concise and engagement program for the community. So you have to pulse it, you have to make sure you give it time and be, be, be really uh, mindful of the time. If you said it's going to start at five, it's start at five, it's one person. Because that way, the next time they know that you're going to start on time, because the worst thing is to have a presenter and they're waiting for people when we just have to continue and be mindful of the time. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you. And then just remember too, that it's, it's positive. It's, you know, it's, it's, it, don't take it as negative criticism or anything like that. So like if you put on your survey, um, what, you know, what was your favorite thing of the event or the program? And then another line that says, what could we have done better? And they, you know, have say something that feels like a criticism. Just remember, it's not necessarily a criticism. This is a way for us to get feedback and find ways that we can continue to grow. Because at the end of the day, we all need to continue growing to make sure that we're adjusting and, and dealing with everything and, and doing what we can for our, for our kids, for our babies. So definitely just you know remember as you do the survey that not to take it personal, none of us are perfect. It's one of those things that it happens, um, but definitely ask for that feedback and pass on the information. So when you do the transitions, most of you are gonna be transitioning, um, you know, within the end of May um, area, just make sure that you are passing that information along. You're passing over a procedure book um, or a USB or a drive or however it is that your unit does it, but that you're passing that information along so that the next person in that position has an idea of where to start. Thank you so much. And like I said, we just have, I'm giving you tools and resources how to to grow. Make sure that you, you use your resources effectively, efficiently, and economically. Next slide. Wellness. 
uh, we cannot just end the presentation without talking about wellness. We talk about mental health, we talk about safety in programs, and we're going to talk a little bit about wellness. Wellness is everything that compasses the wholeness of you. It has different dimensions. We have emotional, we have environment, we have financial, we have social, intellectual, physical, spiritual, occupational. And as we go into it and dive into what, what is on each component, we will see that PTA, when we were looking at this, very much actually compasses all of that. We make sure that our kids' emotional is already in check. The mental, the mental, the the anything that deals with the health for them for their mind, the environmental, what is it that we're doing out there? The state that includes the safety, the financial, what resources we can provide to the family, social, how can we can engage our community spiritually, how we can expand our sense and purpose in life. Those are the stuff that we as the PTA do, and we do it very well. Occupational, we trying to give parents the resources, the, the tips, even to the local units to create that personal satisfaction and enrichment to what? To the drives from the work that we do with so much love for all of you guys. Physical, we recognize that the children need check out. We do sometimes healthy fare. Uh, we do uh, financial literacy. We talk about social when we do events to gather the family together. Um, all those eight I mentioned of wellness, we do it in PTA constantly, and it's part of our mission. So we couldn't just end today without talking about the next slide, um, please. Okay, so this slide has to do with safety. So when you look at it, these are all links. <laughs> Um, we will make sure to have it sent out as a PDF um, so that you, everyone can click on it. But this breaks down the safety within different age groups. So you have, you know, like your big kids, five to nine, preteens, 10 to 14, and then teens, 15 through 19. Um, because the reality is all of our kids, depending on their age group, then different safety issues come, you know, become a concern. So these are all links. They kind of go back in, into more detail. But we wanted to let you all know that this information is from Safe Kids Worldwide. It actually, they, um, it's led by the Florida Department of Health, and they actually will do safety workshops if you reach out to them free of charge. They'll do workshops, they'll do sports clinics, um, they, they do a lot of things. So definitely reach out to them um, because as you can see, there's, there's a lot of options that you have as a unit on ways that you can support the safety of our children. Um, so this is, it's an important one. Can we have the following slides that are just from mental health from A to Z. We put with the alphabet, everything that goes compasses mental health. And there's a lot of um, different type of um, disorders that we want to, we're gonna provide those information to you. We're not gonna go in detail because um, it's going to be too in depth, but we just want to have it in there because it's part of the resources pack that we have prepared for you guys. And like Asia, the mental health A to Z was also on is that at health and all topics that they provide um, for the community. And so this is actually something, these next two slides are something that we shared before, um, but you know, we wanna make sure that everyone kind of gets an, uh, at least a chance to look at it. So this first slide is about assembly ideas. So there's different things, like there's uh, a superhero that does talks about bullying and how to be a good person. There's different magic shows that work on attitude, empathy, uh, motivational speakers. You have juggling and comedy shows, music shows. The BMX is super popular, especially with our middle schoolers. Um, so that's a really, that's a cool one. Uh, they have theater shows that, that work on bullying prevention. Uh, read alouds are always free. Your librarians are always willing to come to your schools and read to your, to your students. And then we also have PTA led programs. So things that you as a PTA would can kind of just take the reins and lead yourselves. So you can do like a kindness movie night, uh, bulletin boards about, you know, kindness and just being kind. I think we need way more kind people um, in the world. 
uh, bathroom stall positive messages, silicone bracelets with positive messages. Uh, middle and high schoolers are tend to, to handle those pretty well. Uh, lawn signs. It can be something as simple as a positive, positive lawn signs as the kids are walking into school that says you matter. Um, webinars for students about self-talk, mental health. There are a lot of different uh, we are working on a list that we can share with everyone, but there are a lot of different places that will do webinars. Uh, I know this one place that will do a webinar about like uh, what is a healthy relationship and what that looks like, uh, especially for our high schoolers. That's extremely important. Uh, little libraries with books about kindness. Uh, we had a school that actually did a little library and they just were able to also make it handicap accessible. So they spoke to the commissioners and they made it where it was it was handicap accessible, so it was inclusive to everyone. It. So it was awesome. Um, invite school guidance counselors to present during a general meeting and talk about the mental health or anything like that. Um, and then just create a wellness committee. So next year, try to add a wellness committee to your to your board. Uh, mental health, physical wellness, um, and just wellness and safety, and um, in general are extremely important, especially right now. And then just model appropriate behaviors. So, you know, be nice. Thank you, Shelly, so much for all that. And um, this is the end of our presentation. And without we, um, if you have any questions, please send us an email at mental.health at floridapta.org. Uh, the Road to Success is always under construction. And I just wanna also invite you that as a local unit leaders, we is our job not just to give to the community but also to our board in itself so it is good for us to develop a time when we're going to meet together as a board to talk to teach to train to um, check on our mental health as well to do uh, webinars seminars whatever it is gathering together social just to keep us also to have a self-care because it is important if we are not in the position to be feel and give it's gonna be hard for us to give if we don't feel ourselves. And as a board, as a leaders, it is our duty to make sure that our board is also mind, body, and soul in check and wellness all across the board. Thank you. And with that, I want to give it to our president, Carolyn Nelson Bowden. Thank you, Asia and committee. What a lot of information uh, that no doubt those who weren't here uh, we'll be sorry that they missed. Uh, if this is your first Road to Success session, uh, please know that we post a copy of the recording to our website so that you can go back at any time and listen to those and share them with your local units because the information that is shared on a weekly basis is certainly worthy of being shared with others, especially today when we're talking about safety, uh, given the current climate in the United States. Uh, as um, was shared during the presentation, we've had more mass shootings than there are days in this year, sometimes more than one in a day. So it is up to each of us to keep our families uh, and our communities safe and prepared. Uh, and the information and tools that you gathered today will help you towards doing just that. I uh, wanna bring to your attention a couple of things that are coming up. The first thing is on May 6th, we have our first face-to-face -face reflections acknowledgement ceremony of our beautiful children and their talents, which will take place in Orlando. And we're super excited about that. For additional information, please visit the Florida PTA website and you will see how you can register. register registration is required for all attendees in order to allow us to properly prepare. Uh, and then the Piste de Resistance starts this summer, which is our 2023 Centennial Leadership Convention. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you register and join us because it promises to be a wonderful event. Of course, we'll always have workshops, networking, and an opportunity for you to grow both professionally and within your personal development, not only your PTA position, but allow you to grow as a leader. Uh, I look forward to seeing everybody there. Any questions about that, again, visit our Florida PTA website, call the office, or feel free to email me at president at floridapta.org. Thank you again for joining us. Very excited that you were here. And thanks again to the committee 
for the information that they provided to make all of us better, safer, and a better community. Thanks again. Thank you. Good job, team. Very good job. Lots of great information. Um, awesome. It was very, very good. Thank you so much. I love that programming part. It, that could be a whole workshop. <laughs> yes. Yes. You guys, you guys did a great job. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Thank you. We yeah. worked very hard to it. We were rushing. Out, like We just wanted to keep the time. And, and it's so much no, information that perfect. we wanted to we wanted to give um, as much as we could. Um, so.